Yo guys, what's up? Today I want to go over a pretty important topic in calculus called hyperbolic trigonometric functions, okay? So now we have two types of trigonometric functions, hyperbolic and circular. The circular functions, they, they involve the unit circle, and they are the typical functions that you already know, sine, cos, and tangent, and the other functions that you have. They're inverses, they're, they, they're inverses and cosecant, uh, secant, and cotangent, okay? And now I want to introduce a new type of functions that have to do with a hyperbola. So now we have two most fundamental functions that are going to be hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So now hyperbolic sine is going to be defined as sine h, which is going to indicate that it's hyperbolic and not the common sine of x, is going to be equal to, we define sine of hyperbolic sine to be e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2, okay? This is the definition of sine, hyperbolic sine, and I want to say singe, and I need to explain that, yes. Singe is how you pronounce this function, okay? You basically add a C into, like, into the, into the way in which you write the function. This is singe x, and singe x equals this expression over here, okay, using Euler's number. So now, uh, what about cosine, hyperbolic cosine, which is pronounced cosh, because you write it as it sounds, cosine hyperbolic of x cosh x, this is going to be e to the x uh, plus e to the negative x over 2, okay? So now you can see that the only difference between singe and cosh is going to be that we have the, the e that has a negative exponent, has a negative and a positive sign in the two functions, okay? That is the only difference that they have. Now, the graphs of these two functions, uh, they look something like this. So for singe, you're basically gonna have uh, you're basically gonna have something that looks kind of like this. So this is gonna be like this, and this is gonna be like this. It's basically a third degree polynomial. Well, not polynomial. Simply, it looks kind of like x to the x cubed. They, that is how singe looks like. Uh, there are no critical points here, of course. This is just like a visual image or like a very lousy way to graph singe. You can go into any uh, any graphic calculator or any website that you want, and you can graph singe and see its most critical points, okay? Now, what about cosh? Well, for cosh, there is something pretty cool, and is that cosh is only going to be defined for values greater than 1. So I'm going to say this is 1, and cosh is going to look like a parabola. Now, why, uh, why does cosh not go below 1? Well, if you evaluate cosh at x equals 0, you're going to see that you get 1 plus 1, okay? Both of the both of these e's they go to one, and you get one plus one over over two. That is going to be one. Two over two equals one. So you get this value, and you will never cosh will never go below one. Okay. So cosh is only going to be defined. It's only going to have positive outputs. Okay. Now there is something that I want to go over, and is a hyperbolic tangent. Now in in circular trigonometry, you know that you write tangent as sine over cosine. Well, really, we're pretty lucky that. In hyperbolic trigonometry, it's the same thing. So hyperbolic tangent, it's also going to be defined, and I missed the x. This is going to be tangent, hyperbolic tangent of x. This is going to be sinh of x over cosh of x, OK? So this is how hyperbolic tangent is defined. Now we know that you can simplify this to be uh, 1 over 2 times uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x over uh, 1 over 2 times e to the x plus e to the negative x. And so you get that. You can cancel out the uh, 1 over 2s, and you get that uh, hyperbolic. This was going to be the end, but I made that I made the line too big. Uh, hyperbolic tangent of x is going to be equal to uh, e to the x minus e to the negative x over e to the x plus e to the negative x, okay? So this is how you define hyperbolic tangent, okay? You can see it is pretty simple. Uh, you just need to, you know, cancel out those two coefficients. And it is the same idea as, um, as circular trigonometry, okay? So now I want to show you how singe and cosh involve a hyperbola. So remember that a hyperbola, and actually we're, go we're not going to use any hyperbola. We're going to use the unit hyperbola that looks something like this. So we have... Uh, I think, yeah, that looks all right, I guess, and uh, like this, yep. So now the unit hyperbola is going to look like this. We have this, 
And you also have, uh, I'm gonna begin over here, yep. You have something like that. So this is gonna be hyperbola. It's not the best drawing at all, but this is a hyperbola. Remember, a hyperbola is like, you could say you have two parabolas and you wanna switch them, you wanna rotate them, and then you wanna put them like on opposite sides. This is kind of like a parabola, um, like a parabola, uh, rotate it, and also this. So this is what a hyperbola looks like. And now the equation for this graph is gonna be x squared minus y squared equals one, okay? So basically these lines, they represent the x, y points where though the squares of x and the y coordinate of the x and y coordinates subtracted, if you subtract the x coordinate squared minus, if you subtract from the x coordinate squared, the y coordinate squared, you're gonna get one, okay? So these lines, they represent those points that complete or satisfy this condition, okay? And this is gonna give you a hyperbola. Now, there is something pretty interesting and that, well, it shares a lot of resemblance with, with circular trigonometry, and is that any point on this graph is gonna have coordinates, hyperbolic, uh, cosine, and I'm gonna use I'm gonna use actually u. U is usually um, the variable that you use for uh, hyperbolic angles. Okay, in this case, this is an angle, but it's not the circular angle that you're used to. So we call u usually the hyperbolic angle. So any point that you have on this graph is gonna have coordinates uh, hyperbolic cosine and uh, hyperbolic sine. Okay, sinh u. Okay. And now this implies that there is a relationship that you can that you can create uh, with this equation and that relates uh, cosine, co hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. And is that cosine or hyperbolic cosine squared of u minus uh, hyperbolic, uh, well, basically sinh squared. I'm, you know, I'm kind of mixing way different ways in which you can say those two functions. I'm gonna use cos and sinh. So uh, cos squared, minus a sinh squared is going to be equal to one, okay? And now this is a relationship that is pretty similar to uh, another equation that we had in, we know, we, that we had in circular trigonometry. So you know that in circular, you have sine squared uh, of theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. Well, in this case, this is kind of like uh, the brother or the, the sibling for this equation over there, okay? This is the Pythagorean theorem. Remember that in the unit circle, every point has, also it has coordinates, um, cosine and sine. In this hyperbola, well, every point has coordinates, hyperbola, cosh and sinh, okay? Those are the coordinates for any point in this hyperbola. And well, we can replace, since x and y represent uh, coordinates, well, you can replace x and y with hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, okay? And then, well, any, every time that you're doing a problem involving hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, well, you can create relationships using this function. So you know that, for instance, uh, let me give you an example, uh, cos, uh, hyperbolic cosine of u is gonna be equal to the square root of one plus hyperbolic sine squared of u, okay? So for instance, this is an equation that is true based on this equation, based on the, uh, the equation for a hyperbola, for the unit hyperbola, okay? So now, uh, this is pretty much an introduction to hyperbolic uh, trigonometric functions. In following videos, I will find the derivative of these functions, with, you, which you can actually do it right now, you're gonna see that it's pretty simple, and you get a pretty cool result. So, yep, and also you can find the inverse, the, 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 the derivative of the inverse hyperbolic functions, and that is also really cool too, and well, it involves more techniques, uh, but yeah, all of this is pretty cool. I hope that you learned something today and that this video has been helpful, okay? So see you in the following video. Don't forget to subscribe and bye.